Hi again, and welcome to another Razorback screencast. Um, in the previous cast, we've been doing a lot of UV mapping, and we're almost complete with the um, UV mapping process. We've almost completed it, but we do have one or two more spots here on the arms to take care of. And to see it a little bit better, I've rotated this arm here 90 degrees so we can see the base. And the base is made up of this cylinder, and this bracket. So for the purposes of UV mapping I'm going to make them into one object. So I'll just start by selecting both objects and pressing C to convert to an editable object. And then I right click and I say connect objects plus delete. And that will connect the objects into one polygonal mesh and it will also delete the originals. So now we have this object, I'd like to check and see if we have a face hair at the end of it. So the easiest way to do that is actually to maybe go from a view like that and with a rectangular selection just sort of select that spot and it looks like we do. So I'd want to get rid of that. We don't need that because it's going to be hidden. And because this is a Cinema 4D cylinder, the ends here are probably not connected. You can see here I can just remove one of the groups of faces. So what we want to do is select all and use the optimize command. Oop. And we just say polygons, unused points, and points with a tolerance of 0 0.004. So we can just say OK. And from there on, it's going to weld everything that falls within a certain threshold. That's what we want. From here on out, I think we can just use flat mapping and use some of the techniques that we've been using in the previous videos. I'm just going to speed through this. If you want more of an in-depth look at the way this UV mapping stuff is done and some of the details about what I'm doing, Feel free to check out the other videos I've been working on. So I'm assigning that first set as flat and this second set as cylindrical. But in order to properly assign the cylindrical mapping, I will need to move this down to sort of a central point. You can just roughly line it up, that should be enough. And then I can assign those UV coordinates. Going to my texture view, you can see everything that I just mapped. It doesn't look pretty, but it's good enough for now. So here's our cylinder, and everything should be connected. If we were to just relax those UVs, I wonder what it would look like. Not great. That's not what we want. So, let's do one more projection. Let's select these faces at the front and these faces at the back and we'll do a flat map. Just rotate it into place so it's at least pointing in the right direction. And assign UV coordinates. So we know we have two sets of faces right here. And what we can do is select one set of faces and just pull them away. So what we should be left with here is uh, the cylinder itself. The top and bottom caps. And this part right here. Now we know from our previous adventures in UV mapping that we cannot unwrap something that is sort of balloon shaped where there's only one opening at one end. So what we have to do is kind of make the call of where are we going to split this object and I think we're going to split this bottom face off. 
so that everything highlighted in orange right now is basically going to be pulled away as a separate part of the object. So I'm just going to pull that away. Now we can basically select these parts and unwrap them. And all the objects unwrapped. This part here looks a little interesting, a little bit stressed, and that's just because of uh it's just because of the fact that it's sort of being constrained by these edges. So if we wanted to, we can relieve some of that by slicing at the corners. And I think that would be a good thing to do. So let's just grab a few edges. I'm just going to grab the four inner edges and then we can unwrap again except cutting the selected edges. You see here it cuts those edges and it releases a lot of the tension. Cool. So now that we have all of these parts laid out, we can just do what we've been doing previously and realign them. Now sometimes it needs our help to get the alignment correct. because it doesn't always you make the best use of the space when you have um, just a few large and awkward pieces. This is actually a really good example of an instance when it doesn't really use all of the space available. I found that if you if you orient the parts to sort of a direction that you think would work well for instance, you know, one facing up, one facing down, sort of arrange them like this, and then you say you are not allowed to rotate, so preserve orientation. You can actually pack them in a little bit better. It seems in this case, Cinema 4D does not want to play ball. That's okay. Let's just leave that object like that. And now, if we zoom out, we can see that just like all of these other objects, it too is mapped. We do notice that this is backwards right here, and that's going to be a problem. So we can select this part, and then down here in UV commands, we can mirror mirror U or mirror V. So five, six, seven, and then the top part here looks like one, two, three. Looks like that's being accurately respected down here. And I can't see the cylinder right now, but I think it's fine. If you're having trouble seeing the grid, what you can do is select the object, well, the texture tag rather, that's being affected, and you can increase the number of tiles. So I'm going to make this 4 by 4, and now we can see the numbers a whole lot better. And we can confirm that the numbers are in fact the correct orientation on the cylinder. So that's good. We can put that back to one by one. And that's that. So we can call this, uh, let's just leave this as right pivot. So we also have these caps right here and here. We're going to want to map those as well, but this is one of those situations where I'm not sure how useful it is to have them as their separate objects with separate UV maps. So maybe what we should do is combine them with this object. So we have these three objects selected and we can just right click and say connect objects plus delete. It actually gives us a few selection tags that represent the different objects that were involved, I think. I'm thinking of a boolean. These tags were there before, I believe. So we can just remove the period one that was added at the end. And what we have here is our mapped object with two new sets of polygons that are not mapped. So that's the first thing we'll want to do. I'm just going to check them out. And it looks like there's still polygons facing down. 
We don't really need those, so now would be a good time to get rid of them, I think. And I'm having a bit of trouble selecting things. So, what I like to do in a situation like this, where everything is one polygonal mesh, but I'm having trouble selecting it, is I just select the polygons I want to work on, and I have a shortcut that I've bound to semicolon. So I can say semicolon U for hide unselected, semicolon H for hide selected. So I could select the large part of the arm and say semicolon H hide selected. And what it does is it basically just hides those polygons just for now. Now I can select these loops of polygons down here, delete them, and then I can press semicolon P for unhide all. I used P because it's like previous state, take me back to the way it was. And as long as you're still in polygon mode, you can just press semicolon P and everything goes back to the way it was. It's a really great way of isolating pockets of geometry to work on them. So now I can basically just select these two polygonal objects and select our texture tab, tag, set it to flat mapping, looks like it's already set up. And we can just say assign UV coordinates. Now it looked like things didn't quite work there and that's because of this polygon selection. It looks like the texture that we had applied to it is being restricted to the original object. So maybe there was something to this selection tag. You can either delete the tag and then delete this or just delete the selection and it should have the same effect. But we can see here that these were indeed mapped. So what we can then do is select with the arm selected, we can go to the, we can select these circles to make our job easier and then go to the texture view and just sort of move them off to the side. And we should just be able to relax these quite easily. Yeah, that was quite uneventful. Uh, there's a little bit of warping around the edges. If you want to prevent that, what you can do is just deselect the center polygons with confidence that they are properly mapped. And then you can sort of, with the pin to neighbors so, uh, option turned on, you can sort of rest assured that only the outside polygons are going to move like that. And that can sometimes give you a, a more circular result. And so we can just add these to the map anywhere we want because nothing's been painted yet. But we're not sure if they're the correct size. So now would be a decent time to select all these. And in the optimal mapping, we just say realign. And it sort of realigns things. But it moves things around. So you can sort of weigh the odds. How important is it to you that these are proportionally sized versus keeping the arrangement you have because I don't believe you can just select a few shells. If you do, it basically makes those take up all the space. It still realigns everything. So what you would want to do is select all the shells, realign everything, and then maybe sort of use your discretion. For instance, we don't really want things laid out in this particular fashion. Maybe we wanted these circular bits to be in a different spot on the map. And the arms to be grouped together. So we can just sort of rearrange things even after the optimal mapping has done its best. kind of like that. But it's often a good idea to make sure that the objects have enough space in between them. And keep similar objects near to each other. So theoretically, this object is actually closer to here because it actually belongs there on the object. So you can get creative with it. For instance, I could put the small cap down there near the front and then actually just move the front over there so they can share sort of similar paint and then I can maybe see if the rear cap will fit in this region. It looks like it will. So there we can actually keep the caps near to their origins. That might be useful. 
I'm not sure. You can even take it further by saying, all right, let's rotate this guy down. And then when I have this cap selected, put it up here. So it's even a little bit closer. But you can play with all these different layouts and see what works best for you. This seems pretty good to me. And what we've done there is sort of included these caps in this object. And that's going to make it easier when we're painting things. Because it'll be trivial to paint those caps if they're in that position. Now it looks like we're pretty much done mapping the arm if we don't count this blade holding mechanism. And you know I've been looking at this blade holding mechanism and it's, I'm just, it's just not convincing. So maybe that's something we can work on in the future before mapping it. But for now I think this arm is pretty much mapped and it actually makes me think of what the next step will be. We have a couple options. We can combine this arm all into one object um, before before painting it and sort of combining all the UVs where we spent all this time creating, combining them into one map. That's one approach. Another approach is just to use the objects we have right now as individual UV maps. So if I show the UV mesh, you can see we have the right pivot, we have uh, the right base, the large arm, the right cylinder one, which I believe should be right small arm, or right forearm one, and then this would be right forearm two, and then we have the plate that's not mapped yet in the shaft. So this could be individual UV maps, each one, or we can actually combine all these objects into one temporarily, pack them all into one UV map, make it a really big texture, and then split them into separate objects again. What that's going to give us is sort of, you know, like you would you would look at this object and, you know, depending on how we laid it out, it might just occupy that part. And then we select a different object like this one, and it might just occupy the lower area. So there's a lot of different ways to um, to share these these UVs on different maps. Um, I'm not quite sure which direction we'd like to go in for that for that sort of a for that sort of stage of the project. But it is kind of cool that we've uh, successfully UV mapped one of these arms, and it means the next step can be. Uh, but when we finally decide what we'd like to do is mirroring it over to the left again. And the cool part is that there's a tool to handle that, so we don't have to worry too much about it because we used that in a previous screencast. So at a certain point, when we're sort of done mapping this arm, we can just duplicate it over to the other side and perhaps do some painting on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this installation, and until next time, see ya!